chapter 6, verse 4 and 5, we can read something that was a very significant prayer for the Jewish people. It's known as the Shema, and the word Shema simply means to listen. And this is what it says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. Now, this is without a doubt the most important prayer for the Jewish people. This was the first prayer that you were taught to pray as a child and it was often the last words that would leave your lips as you were about to pass away. These words would be prayed every single morning and every single night by faithful Jewish people. It was essentially their pledge of allegiance to God where they submitted to His leadership and declared their love for Him. It was them putting their life in order of God's business. Jesus would have prayed this prayer And another man named Saul would have prayed this prayer. 
Saul would go on to become the Apostle Paul, but before he became the Apostle Paul, he was a devout Pharisee, faithfully trying to live out his allegiance to the law of God. He would have prayed this prayer every single morning. And I believe he would have prayed this prayer this morning. In Acts chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, it says, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Saul was not lost in any way by today's standards. He wasn't godless, he wasn't faithless, he wasn't immoral, he wasn't impure. He was a devoted Jewish man who was a Pharisee who longed to see the faith of his ancestors carry on with strength. He was devoted to the law of God and the way of God as he best understood it. And he went to the greatest lengths of any people to make sure that Christianity, which was posing a threat to his beloved faith, be stamped out. In Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 7, it says, As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but they didn't see anyone. Can you imagine the horror that would have filled Paul's soul as he came to the realisation that the God that he is desperately trying to honour and serve is the same God who he is killing people for worshipping. It would have been an unspeakable sorrow that came over his heart. Now, a lot of people will say, that it was at this moment that Paul was converted. And in many ways he was, but I see Paul's conversion as much more of a redirection of his passion and zeal as it was a complete conversion. Many people will also tell you that it was at this point that God changed the, the Pharisee Saul into the Apostle Paul, which is entirely untrue. He didn't change his name for 14 years later. And the only reason he changed his name was so that he would have more success in Greek-speaking communities with a Greek name so that he could take the gospel to those people as well. Saul will become Paul and go on to become the most important figure in New Testament Christianity literally making a bigger mark on the world than any other disciple, having most of the New Testament written by him. But I have to wonder, that morning when Saul was packing his things and putting on his sandals and getting ready to go to Damascus, before he did those things, he would have sat down and he would have prayed the Shema, dedicating his life to God's leadership, acknowledging God as the leader of his life. Now, I bet you he expected that that prayer would be fulfilled by many dead Christians as, as testament that God has blessed me and I've done the work he's asked me to do. But what if God's answer to, to Saul's prayer was the event that took place on that road? What if his prayer was answered in a way that was completely outside what he expected to happen, set him on a completely new direction and had him change the course of human history forever? Are we prepared to allow God to answer our prayers the way that He needs to instead of the way that we want Him to?